So we've talked a whole lot about Donald Trump and the mental gymnastics that he puts his followers through. And we've all sat back and asked ourselves, how can they continue to jump through these hoops? And we've waited for some sort of gotcha moment, like that'll be the one. That'll be the one that wakes them up and they finally realize they've been being played this whole time. And so far, that moment is nowhere in sight. Now, if I were to ask you, what are three of Donald Trump's most famous cliches and catchphrases? If I ask that to a Trump supporter or someone who hated his guts, I guarantee you locker up would be in anyone's top three. But now Donald Trump denies that he ever said it. This is like Leonard Skinner denying that they ever played Freebird, but take a look at it. I want to follow up on what Rachel asked you, though, because I hear you struggling with it. I hear you say it's a tough question, a bit unsure. You famously said regarding Hillary Clinton, lock her up. You declined to do that as president. I beat her. It's easier when you win. And they all said lock her up. And I felt, and I could have done it, but I felt it would have been a terrible thing. And then this happened to me. And so I may feel differently about it. I can't tell you. I can, I'm not sure I can answer the question. Hillary Clinton, I didn't say lock her up, but the people would all say lock her up, lock her up. Okay. Then we won. And I'd say, and I said pretty openly, I'd say, all right, come on, just relax. Let's go. We've got to make our country great. Yeah. And it would have been, think of it, you lock up the wife of a president of the United States. But they States. want to lock you up over $130,000 of an accounting thing. And a she perfectly, actually... And a perfectly stated accounting thing. But... You know, people also say, can you bring the country together? And the answer is yes. Success will bring the country together because I had it together. Before the China virus came in, I had it together. We really had it together. And, and it would have stayed. I think it would have stayed. Everybody was, everybody was doing better. The country was doing better than it had ever done. And we're going back to the same policies and then some. Now, there's only one part right at the start of that clip that I agree with Will Kane on, and that is that Donald Trump is struggling to answer this question. He's clearly struggling. He's clearly all over the place. And I can't believe that they would sit there and let him insult their intelligence right to their face. I understand that his supporters are going to follow him to the very end, but how can people who call themselves reporters and call themselves journalists sit there and let him say that and just completely give him a pass for it? He's clearly now trying to repaint the entire picture because he's scared shitless. And he's trying to act like, oh, I might have said those things or the crowd might have said those things and I just kind of went along with it, but I, did, I thought it would be horrible for our country to lock up Hillary. I would never have done such a thing, but now they've done it to me. Here's what you got to understand. The reason that he couldn't lock up Hillary is because he had no reason to. That's the whole that's the whole point. So it's complete apples and oranges to even compare the two. And what Donald Trump fails to realize is that we live in a digital age where anyone can go out there and put together a montage of clips of you saying, lock her up. Take a look at this. So what for what she's done, they should lock her up. She's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. So crooked Hillary, wait. Crooked you should lock her up, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something, though, and it's very, lock them up. You should lock them up. Lock up the Bidens. Lock up Hillary. Okay, here's one. Just came out. Lock her up is right. You know what? I've been saying, I've been saying, let's just beat her on November 8th. But you know what? No, no. You know what? I'm starting to agree with you, I'll tell you. Now, I understand that there are still people out there who would say, but wait a minute, hold on, the crowd was cheering it, and he was just kind of agreeing with the crowd. He didn't really mean it. He didn't really do it. And I would say, actually, he said it directly to Hillary Clinton's face. Take a look at this. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton... <laughs> So my question for all the diehard Trump supporters who are still hanging on to the Trump train for dear life would be, you were chanting lock her up. He was saying lock her up. He told her to her face that she should be in jail. That's one of the biggest catchphrases and cliches that you guys repeated over and over and over again. Then he didn't lock her up when he was in office. Why? Because he actually couldn't. And now he's saying he never said it. How do you roll with that? How do you just go right along with that? Because I promise you tomorrow, if Joe Biden came out and said, you know what, these Republicans got it right. I don't think a woman should have no say over her reproductive care. I'd say, whoa, hold on a minute, Joe. That's not what we stand for. That's not what I believe. I'm not, I wouldn't sit here and say, oh yeah, Joe's been saying that the entire time. I don't understand how you can show them the evidence right in their face. 
and they'll still look at you and say, yeah, well, you just, you're just taking it out of context. But let's take a look at this next clip and let them make every excuse in the world for it. But here Donald Trump is talking about how bad it would be to have an indicted president. Take a look. She shouldn't be allowed to run. There's virtually no doubt that FBI Director Comey and the great, great special agents of the FBI will be able to collect more than enough evidence to garner indictments against Hillary Clinton and her inner circle, despite her efforts to disparage them and to discredit them. If she were to win this election, it would create an unprecedented constitutional crisis. In that situation, we could very well have a sitting president under felony indictment and ultimately a criminal trial. It would grind government to a halt. Notice how he called them great FBI leaders. They were great when he was sicking them on Hillary Clinton, but when they found nothing and then turned around and came after him and found a whole bunch of shit, oh, oh, wait a minute. Now they're, everyone's weaponizing the government against me. Now I'm the victim in the story. What he's basically saying is there's two sets of laws in this world. There's, there's one set of law for everybody else to abide by, and then he gets a pass for that. That's essentially what he's saying. And his followers goes right along with this stuff. And every time I do a video talking about these things, I continue to be flabbergasted as to how we ended up here. I, I really am truly flabbergasted as to how we ended up here. Because again, if a candidate started going against everything that he or she had been saying for the entire time, I would stand up and notice it. That's why that I quit going to church when I was 12, okay? Because I literally quit going when I was 12 years old because I would be sitting there going, yeah, but that's not actually in the Bible. Yeah, but that's you're actually taking that out of context. I did that as a kid. I went back and dabbled in it one more time when I was 20 years old and was reminded real quick about why I left the first time. But still, if someone goes off script, I catch it. I'm real quick to catch it and they don't. They just keep giving him a pass for this stuff. And he clearly is, it's, he's only in it for himself. I mean, I don't know how anyone can see it any other way. The man is clearly in it for himself. The rules only apply to everyone else and not him. It's all about back in the blue until the blue comes after him and then they're all, they all should be fired, they all should be done away with. That's his rhetoric. And his followers want a man with that temperament to be the leader of the free world again. A guy who's going to be coming for nothing but revenge and retribution, they want that guy to have another shot at it. Well, I don't. And there's a whole lot of people that don't, and there's a whole lot of us that are sick and tired of this rhetoric. We're sick and tired of watching them get played. I understand they might enjoy it, and I know I've used the phrase that I'm embarrassed for them, but I'm to the point where I'm just tired of seeing it for them. It's like I'm tired of seeing them get slapped around. I, I feel like uh, Howard Cosell back during the Larry Holmes and uh, Marvis Frazier fight. He just... Holmes was just peppering Marvis Frazier, just destroying him. And that's what drove Howard Cosell out of boxing. He never called a boxing match after that because he thought the fight should have been stopped a long time ago. I'm to that point. This fight should have been stopped a long time ago. The referee should have stopped in and said, hey, these people have had enough. Poor old Marvis Frazier was still trying to fight. He still thought he had a shot. It's the same thing today with Trump supporters. They're still fighting. They still think they got a shot. And this guy is just insulting their intelligence on a daily basis. And it's truly frustrating and painful to watch. But don't worry. I have people say, Brando, you know, don't lose courage. Don't stop doing what you're doing. I'm not going to. But damn, it does get stressful.